I find it interesting. The negative states that universal health care system will never work due to the current system we already have in the United States. He states that the transition between the two is too hard. I have to say, just because this transition would be difficult, it is not a valid reason for not changing our health care system. All the facts support that a change is desperately needed. There has been skyrocketing health care costs in the past five years with a rate of increase that is two to three times the rate of inflation. The percentage of uninsured Americans has risen dramatically if countries like Ireland, the UK, Germany, Sweden, England, and Switzerland can have national health care systems, certainly the United States can also. He states, he found an article in NCBI U.S. National Library written by Richard Krein that dis discredits that the IOM estimate, estimate leads to 18,000 excess deaths each year is incorrect and not possible to draw a casual inference. He, each of his two studies of the IOM drawn from were very large, stretching from no effects to the increasing mentality of no effects. The right answer is from 0 to 36,000 excess deaths, he states. What I have to say to that is common sense tells us that as more and more Americans are uninsured, the number of deaths would be on the rise due to lack of medical treatment. Whether the number of deaths is 5,000, 18,000, or 36,000, the fact, the fact is that without insurance and not being able to afford medical treatment, the number of deaths will be on the rise. His contention one, universal health care is just another step in the direction of socialism. It is a government responsibility and people should not have to rely on government. If health care is considered a right, then government bureaucrats will, will be making health, life, and even death decisions that should be up, up to patients to decide. <clears throat> My comment back to that is, socialism is defined as a theory of systems of social organization that advocates the vesting of ownership and control of the means of production and distribution of capital land, etc. in the community. As a whole, for one, for one, a lot of major rules are passed through the government, so for, so for you to say that we should not rely on the government, then who do we rely on? Who is going to help change universal health care in America? Your contention one is false because we, in fact, need the government to pass the law, but we do not need government bureaucrats making life or death decisions because with universal health care, the doctors and patients will indeed be making those decisions. The negative debate in content for contention two. The VA Veterans Administration System in America already has its universal health care in place for its veterans, and the system is under investigation for failing to provide adequate health care for its veterans. So point one, the, the long waiting list at the VA, I, I myself being a veteran have seen waiting lists and was waiting for a month to get a physical in my blood drawn. I, I waited three months to get an, an MRI done on my back for a service disability for a back injury. Who is to say that government won't have the same issues with universal health care? His sub point two, a, a VA hospital in Arizona knew a circuit list that was designed by the VA managers trying to hide the 14,000, 16,000 were forced to wait months to see this one doctor in his one hospital. My comment back to that. <clears throat> the dem demise of the VA did not happen overnight. It was... <clears throat> it was a result of poor leadership and increased veteran claims over the past eight years due to the war in Iraq. Leadership failed to implement a more efficient claims processing system and patient monitoring systems as implied in the Washington Post by Duncan Hunter. The recent failure of VA's health care system cannot be compared to a national health care system involving the entire U U.S. population. He states that in an affirmative on the American Dream in Contention 1.2 where it says that health care prices are the biggest threat he disagrees and says that his number one threat to the american dream is freedom my comment to that is universal health care and economic freedom go hand in hand the countries that ra that rank the highest on heritage index of economic freedom which measures how friendly <coughs> how friendly countries are to businesses investigation and property rights are australia new zealand switzerland canada chile De denmark of these countries nearly all all have universal health care system. Universal health care system help keep down health care costs. Lower health care costs mean that business and individuals can channel more money into productive uses and foster a vibrant and global competitive market economy. I have won this debate. I, <clears throat> I have won this debate because I have clarified my research and back up my research with important and logical facts. My opponent's arguments deal in vague gen generalities and we are not based on solid evidence.